Hello, my friends. I've been asked to demonstrate how I paint water drops. Now, I'm primarily an oil painter, but I know most of you watching this video are interested in acrylic pouring and embellishing those. So I've been practicing and um, literally I probably painted, I don't know, 60 water drops before I came up with a comfortable, it became comfortable enough to make a video on it. Um, for me, oil is so much easier because acrylics dry so quickly, but um, it can certainly be done in acrylics as well. So let's get started. Now, water, of course, has no color of its own. So if you want to get a realistic looking drop, it needs to take on the color of whatever it's on. So for example, on a green leaf, you would um, be be painting your drop with darker and lighter shades of the green that it's resting on. And these are the basic shapes of water drops. Round if you're looking straight on it. Kind of oval if you're looking sideways at it. And there's a, a dripping drop. <laughs> so since the oval and the round are so similar, I thought I would just demonstrate a round and this one is trickier, the dripping one. We'll see how that goes. And in pink. So I have mixed up, uh, I'm just using craft paint. And, um, is that, did that show? Yeah. And so my darker shade, my, I base coated this little square in, in this lighter magenta. And then straight out of the bottle, I'm using a, a darker shade. You could mix a little black in there. In, in your base coat to get um, a darker shade, but just a titch. But for ease, I, I chose a ready mixed paint. And then for my highlight color, I mixed just a bit of white into the uh, magenta. So we're gonna start with a very pointy brush and I'm going to make the shape of the drop in the uh, light color. Now, <clears throat> this was one of the things I, I struggled with. Um, I was painting the whole thing and I tried it in light and then I tried it in dark and I ended up finding the best way for me is to do half and half and I'll explain why after I do that. So first, let's just make a nice circle shape. I'm doing the bottom portion and I'll try to make it pretty big. You're just sketching in a shape in, um, in light for the bottom and darker. I didn't even clean my brush, and that's fine. Darker for the top. And the reason I do that is because I was having trouble covering. If I did the whole thing in light, I was having trouble covering the light with the dark paint because you use it very thinly. And as you see here, you want a nice gradation of dark without a ring of white around it. And same thing at the bottom, although the bottom is different because there is a shadow beneath it. You don't want um, a dark, dark ring of uh, in your drop, if that makes sense. So that's how I started. Then I'm going to take a angled brush. You see how that's not just straight across, it's angled. And that makes a really nice shading tool. Um, now I am left-handed. You're going to have to reverse this for your purposes. Most of you are probably right-handed. Um, okay, I'm going to just dip the edge of the brush, the pointy end, into a darker shade there and work it into the brush. You need a little more. That's good. Work it into both sides of the brush, back and forth. And now I'm going to shade the bottom of the water drop. So starting on one side, I'm going to lay the pointy end down and slowly, carefully walk it down towards the bottom of the drop, applying pressure 
as I go so you get a nice gradated look. And then lifting the pressure up as I reach the other side. You're going to go about, about half and half, maybe a little short of half and half. Now while I have the paint in the brush, I'm going to go inside, shade the inside of the uh, water drop at the top. So placing it down where I started the shadow, I'm going to do the same thing, applying pressure, going around, maintaining the, the shape of the drop, nice and round, and kind of working the color down, not all the way, about a third of the way through. It's nice if you can maintain a little bit of the background color in the center of your drop. That way um, it looks more transparent. Okay. Clean the brush out. And using that same brush, now I'm going to go into the light that I mixed. And I'm going to shade the bottom not shade, highlight the bottom of the drop. Now I could turn the thing over for ease. This is looking more oval than round, but that's okay. I'm going to start in the same spot and highlight the bottom. It's kind of dry. I think I need to moisten that brush a little more. I dried it off too well and my paint is a little that's a little too white for me. I'm going to go into dab it in the magenta and then back in there darken it just a fraction and start over. And again Avoiding the very center, but walking it up about a quarter of the way, a third of the way. All right, and that's, that's it. Now, if you keep working at it too much, uh, well, it could have something to do with, I'm working on watercolor paper. You won't have quite the problem on an acrylic pour. This is porous and I only put one coat of the magenta down. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I, you won't have this trouble of it absorbing into the paper on, an, on a pour, so it will be actually a little easier. <clears throat> I'm going to go back in there and fix that little hole I, I got. Very, I'm doing a very, very gentle light touch. Just feathering it on. And then you can even take a dry brush. Let's see. This is dry. And kind of tap into it while it's wet. Feather it out even more. So you get rid of any harsh edges. Kind of blend the two darken the light together a bit. There we go. We'll call that good. All right. That's about it. Now all we have left to do is add the, what we, oops, I forgot to get white paint out. Um, what we call the life light. It's the wow moment of water drops, but it's tricky actually. So you take your pointy brush and you dip it into pure white and you're going to add your highlight opposite your shadow in the dark part opposite your shadow so that would be here and you're just going to place a little blob and that's it you could call that done but if you um, want to jazz it up a little bit further you could Wipe the excess off of your brush 
and dribble a little bit more on maybe. And then opposite the brightest highlight in the white or the light section, you're going to have a little reflected light there. Just dab in that. If it's too bright, dab it with your finger. But that's going to be your brightest highlight, that first one. And there is one. I'm going to pause for a moment here. <laughs> okay, I'm back. I had to pause for a moment because I got a delivery. My dogs were going nuts. So, um, now if you want, you can go take your fine pointy brush and go in and darken your shadow a bit and reshape the, uh, reshape your water drop if necessary, just around the very, very edge of it. That'll really make it pop. I'm using a very, very fine touch. I don't know if you can even tell that that did anything, but, but I think it did. All right, let's try one of these. Um, and, and so you could see for the, um, that's kind of a cross between a round and a oval, <laughs> but they come in all different shapes, of course, depending on what they're resting on. We're going to, try a drippy one. They're, they're trickier, but um, certainly very effective. So let's see. I'm going to start the same way. But this time I'll just use the light all the way through and see if it's a problem. I prefer to use light all around at, for my, oops, for my um, guidelines rather than dark. I think. I don't know. I tried both ways and sometimes I liked <laughs> I thought it made sense to go one way and the other. I don't know. So this one is kind of a hook shape. So I'm going to start at the top and it's open at one end. So there's my starting shape. So again with the angle brush, dipping it into the dark. Okay, I'm going to shade the bottom part and up one of the sides, just, well, just basically the bottom part. This angle brush is wonderful. It's kind of like a liner and a flat brush all in one. Turn your work as needed to Make it easier for you, more comfortable. And make it disappear. Kind of walking it down. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's not bad. And now I'm going to apply a shading inside. I think I'm going to turn the, turn it sideways. I think it'll be easier for me. Start at the tip there. I'm going to go over my guideline. See that white is, that's why I do dark and half of it and then kind of fan it out.
I'm using a very, very light touch. Okay, that's not, that's not great. <laughs> but we can fix that. All right, I'm going to go into my light highlight color and highlight the bottom of the drop. Now I'm not going to go all the way to the top. This part is just going to disappear into the background. So I'm going to start very light and then increase the pressure. Walk it up. Now, real quick, I'm going to take this that dry brush, make sure it's dry, and soften that. I don't like that hard edge. Kind of tapping, circular motion. I'm going to take my um, liner brush into the dark and make that a hard edge there because I'm just not happy with the way that looks. Cover up that line. Here I just said get rid of the hard edges and I'm adding one, but <laughs> it's okay on that side. Yeah, they're not all perfect. It takes practice. But you can keep working with, with them and making them better if you let it dry. If you work wet on wet on wet, you, you can dig a hole, but um, as I said, it won't be quite the issue on a canvas that it is on paper. All right. Now the uh, life light gets added again into the dark part of the drop. <laughs> I kind of just dribble it down a little bit, just kind of a Dribbly line, and then, then maybe a bigger, and then a spot, maybe, and then over here, just a light. You can dab it with your finger if you need to, um, soften it a bit. That's not very good. It's not bad, but it's not as good as this one. This one looked better for some reason. I don't know. Oops, there's the phone. I'm going to pause and maybe come back and do one more. Okay, I've returned. I painted another square to uh, demonstrate a large, I'll try to do a large one on there. But first I thought I would show you a, a pour that I embellished with um, and added some of these bubbles. Dew drops, bubbles, same thing, same technique. And they really dress up a pour, I think. Um, different sizes and placement, partial ones. Just They're just really fun. Anyway, that's that. So let's get to it. I'll do one more. Okay, using my pointy brush. That's not the official term. It's called a round brush, but it's a very small one. Uh, I'm going to go into the dark this time. Make my guidelines with dark and see how that compares. Do the whole thing. It's kind of a hassle doing half and half. It seems to make sense to me, but let's try this. Okay, so let's go pretty big. A 
that's kind of a circle. Not perfect, but... Good enough. Okay. Now, taking my uh, angle brush, dressing just half of it, the angled part, into the dark. Working it well into the brush will give you that nice gradation of color. And we're doing the shadow. So starting on one edge, slowly coming around. That's very dry. I think it's it's the watercolor paper. You won't have this trouble on um, on canvas. I've added more water. Yeah, the the watercolor paper is really soaking up. All right, now inside, same technique, pressing down. You see what I don't like is that line there. That's what I was trying to avoid by um, going light all around, made sense. But then I had trouble covering the light. No. I should stop, but I'm going to show you that you can rescue something. Um, all right, let's leave that alone. Let that dry. I'm going to come in with the light. Dressing my angle brush with the light color I've mixed with magenta and white. And I'm painting upside down. It's easier if you turn your work. Got a lump of something in there. There's another one. I'm going to turn it over because it's difficult to work upside down. <laughs> Don't make it harder on yourself than it needs to be. Okay. Walk it up a bit. Let's use this brush and tap out those harsh edges. See, I don't, I don't like that um, dark line at the top there. So I need to come in with a. If it's dry. Um, it's not quite dry. I really shouldn't push it. But I'll do it and show you what happens. <laughs> it might be dry enough, but it should be completely dry before you go back in. Maybe I'll be showing you what not to do. Okay. Okay, well that's better. I got rid of that 
skinny line. I still have a bit of a line, but um, it's being dis somewhat hidden. When you add them to your um, pour, don't put them all in a row. Try to scatter them around. Use an odd number if you if you can. Unless you have so many, it doesn't really matter. Okay, well that, that's not bad. Now if I were being really particular, I could come in here and fix that part. That should be... the background color. Of course, on a pour, it wouldn't matter so much because the background is so busy, usually you, you wouldn't see all these little, little problems. Now, the other thing is that the shadow should be darker than the shadow in the bowl, the shadow underneath. So um, that's pretty dark there. So if one's going to be darker, it should definitely be the one underneath. So let's see if I can't uh, go back and darken that without compromising the shape too badly. The darker it is, it helps the light part really pop. That's better. It's still lighter than that. I went I went too dark on that. One, you know, I went I did two coats up there, and one one coat would have been better, but I had that line I had to get rid of. So anyway. Now the life light, and we'll be done. Oops. I had a little mishap when I paused, my phone dropped into my palette. <laughs> <laughs> used up my white so need a little more fortunately it landed back face up so it wasn't terribly hard to clean up okay going straight into the white and adding the life light opposite the shadow but uh, we go a little bigger this time. That and wiping the excess off, so that remains the brightest. Just a little bit of a dribble. Just a suggestion of further hints and opposite it, a little reflection towards the bottom there. And that's it. So they take some practice, but really, in theory, they're quite simple. So I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration. Um, so what to remember is water reflects the surface upon which it rests. So your colors should be darker and lighter versions of your background. Okay, folks, thanks for joining me. I hope you have some fun with this and uh, let me know if there's something else you'd like me to try to demo. I'm not an expert in anything by any means, but I do enjoy painting and I'm always happy to uh, demonstrate what I know. Okay, take care, my friends. Bye-bye.